Mi Ultimo Adios, English, My Last Farewell, is a poem written by Philippine national hero Dr. Jose Rizal on the eve of his execution by firing squad on 30 December 1896. The piece was one of the last notes he wrote before his death. Another that he had written was found in his shoe but because the text was illegible, its contents today remain a mystery. Mi Ultimo Adios on the afternoon of December 29, 1896, a day before his execution, Dr. José Rizal was visited by his mother, Teodora Alonso, sisters Lucia, Josefa, Trinidad, Maria and Narcissa, and two nephews. When they took their leave, Rizal told Trinidad in English that there was something in the small alcohol stove casanilla, as opposed to saying coconut oil lamparilla, which was intended to provide cover for the transportation of the text. The stove was given to Narcissa by the guard when the party was about to board their carriage in the courtyard. At home, the Rizal ladies recovered from the stove a folded paper. On it was written an unsigned, untitled and undated poem of 14 five-line stanzas. The Rizals reproduced copies of the poem and sent them to Rizals' friends in the country and abroad. In 1897, Mariano Ponce in Hong Kong had the poem printed with the title Mi Ultimo Pensamiento. Father Mariano Dacanay, who received a copy of the poem while a prisoner in Bilibid, jail, published it in the first issue of La Independencia on September 25, 1898 with the title, Ultimo Adios. Rizal did not ascribe a title to his poem. Mariano Ponce, his friend and fellow reformist, titled it Mi Ultimo Pensamiento. My last thought. In the copies he distributed as part of an attempt to, but this did not catch on. Also, the coconut oil was not delivered to the Rizal's family until after the execution as it was required to light the cell. Political impact After it was annexed by the United States as a result of the Spanish-American War, the Philippines was perceived as a community of barbarians. Incapable of self-government, U.S. Representative Henry A. Cooper, lobbying for management of Philippine affairs, recited the poem before the United States Congress. Realizing the nobility of the piece's author, his fellow congressman enacted the Philippine Bill of 1902 enabling self-government, later known as the Philippine Organic Act of 1902, despite the fact that the 1882 Chinese Exclusion Act was still in effect and African Americans had yet to be granted equal rights as U.S. citizens. It created the Philippine Assembly, appointed two Filipino delegates to the American Congress, extended the U.S. Bill of Rights to Filipinos, and laid the foundation for an autonomous government. The colony was on its way to independence, although relatively complete autonomy would not be granted until 4 July 1946 by the Treaty of Manila. Indonesian nationalism the poem was translated into Bahasa Indonesia by Rosahan Anwar and was recited by Indonesian soldiers before going into battle during their struggle for independence. Anwar recalled the circumstances of the translation. The situation was favorable to promote nationalism. On 7 September 1944, Prime Minister Koizo of Japan declared that the East Indies would become independent soon, an announcement that was received enthusiastically throughout the islands, and got ecstatic treatment in Asia Raja the following day. In that context, I thought it would be good that I could disseminate this story about José Rizal among our younger people at that time. It was quite natural, I thought it would be good to tell the story of José Rizal, this rebel against the Spanish. And of course the climax, when he was already sentenced to death and then hauled off to face firing squad, and he wrote that poem, I translated it from the English. Because I do not know Spanish. I know French, I know German, but not Spanish. Then, according to the custom at that time, everything you want to say over the radio station or anything you wanted to publish in a newspaper, everything must go first to the censorship. I sent it to, the censor, no objection, it's okay. Okay. Then I made an arrangement, with my friend, an Indonesian friend, who worked at the radio station, where everything was supposed to be supervised by the Japanese. He gave me a chance to read it, which I did. He read Mi Ultimo Adios over radio in Jakarta on Saturday 30 December 1944 Rizal's 48th death anniversary. 
That same day, the paper Asia Raja devoted almost half of its back page to a feature and poem on Rizal written by Anwar, accompanied by Anwar's translation. Poem Translations Mi Ultimo Adios could be the most translated patriotic swan song in the world, and interpretations into 46 Philippine languages including Filipino Sign Language, and as of 2005 at least 35 English translations known and published in print. The most popular English iteration is the 1911 translation of Charles Derbyshire and is inscribed on bronze. Also on bronze at the Rizal Park in Manila, but less known, is the 1944 one of novelist Nick Joaquin. The latest translation is in Czech by former Czech ambassador to the Republic of the Philippines, H.E. Yaroslav Ludva, and addressed at the session of the Senat. Aside from those mentioned above, the poem has been translated into at least 30 other languages. See also Death poem Saw Aking Mga Kabata References Mauro Garcia, 1961. Translations of Mi Ultimo Adios. In Historical Bulletin Manila. Philippine Historical Association. Hilario, Frank A. 2005, Indios Bravos. Jose Rizal as Messiah of the Redemption. Lumos Publishing House. Yaroslav Ludva, 2006. Mi ultimo adios posledni rozlocheni. Embassy of the Czech Republic in Manila. Multiple Authorship 1990. Mi ultimo adios in foreign and local translations 2 volume. National Historical Institute. Sung by various artists of Spanish language as a tribute. More information needed. Original ultimo adios manuscript. Modern English Translation by Edwin Augustine Lozada, May 2001 Resources Full text in Spanish, Mi Ultimo Adios Full text in Tagalog, Huling Palam Full text in English, My Last Farewell